Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the week ahead video for December 3rd, 2023. Can you believe we're in the last month of the year? It's it's pretty amazing. Anyway, um, we have a lot to talk about this week. Uh, I, I, you know, I want to kind of recap what had happened at the end of last week. Um, also what we're going to be looking ahead going into this week. Uh, but I want to say if you like these videos, you think they're great for preparing you for the week in trading. Make sure you give our team a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, also hit the bell icon. If you hit the bell icon on YouTube, you'll get uh, notified whenever there is a new video out from the Forex Analytics team. Um, remember, these are free, so just give us a thumbs up and uh, thank the team for putting these together for you each and every weekend uh, for the last seven, eight years or however long we've been doing it. Anyway, let's uh, before I even get into the charts, let's talk about Friday. Um, you might have caught it. Fed Chairman Powell, he was speaking at a college. Um, can't think of the name of the college right off the top of my head. It's the weekend. You have to bear with me. Uh, uh, as he was discussing uh, monetary policy, basically, the, the fact of the matter is there wasn't any pushback from all of this kind of dovish Fed rhetoric that we've been getting, um, which, you know, the market was assuming we were going to get some sort of pushback from Fed Chair Powell. Because we didn't, what we saw is we saw bonds, and take a look at the 10 year. 10 years continue to rally. We have this inverted head and shoulder pattern that we've talked about quite extensively throughout the, the daily face, the free face shows that we do every day. When talking about this inverted head and shoulder pattern, notice how we're already reaching for the 200 DMA. Getting pretty close. Now, I'm going to show you why that's so important because we have the jobs report this week, the, the non-farm payroll, which is gonna either confirm or deny <laughs> this rally. But take a look at how important this level is. Not, not only is it the 200 DMA, but it's also the 38% retracement. You'll notice right up over there, it's the 38% retracement of this entire move down in the bond market. So it's gonna be really important inflection point to see if yields will continue lower, and, if the, and, and that would obviously take the dollar down with it. So obviously a weak jobs report come Friday um, or, you know, or maybe unemployment ticks over 4%. That's going to be the catalyst that drives the dollar lower, yields lower, bonds higher. But I'm going to uh, talk a lot more about the bond market and everything else as we go through um, this week's video. Uh, a couple other things that are happening this week, uh, you know, obviously the jobs data, we, we need to also note that the Bank of Canada, excuse me, Bank of Canada, RBA, they're expected to keep rates and change. You know, whether we get hawkish holds I mean, is to be seen, especially with from the RBA, considering that um, RBA Governor Bullock, she's been relatively hawkish, despite the, you know, we did get some weak inflation data this last week, but we'll talk again. We're going to talk more about that later. We're going to go through all the charts that that uh, that, that relate to the Aussie and the and the uh, the Canadian dollar. Um, also, want to talk a little bit about uh, the COT um, uh, levels, and and that's the commitment of traders. They extended their euro dollar positions. Speculators did uh, this, which is really interesting. Um, because we've seen in here, let me pull up the chart for you guys. You can see the COT data. You'll see that the asset managers and, and um, large speculators, they are increasing their euro positions. And this was early in the week this last week. So because it was early in the week, uh, you know, as, as of Tuesday, this is as of Tuesday's data, that means by the end of the week, they probably were continuing to increase their positions of euro longs, um, especially as the dollar found some, you know, uh, we, we, we saw some slipping at the end of the week. So, you know, just keep in mind, those uh, the, people are extending their euro, especially the, the uh, speculator side of the market is increasing their euro long positions, short dollar positions. So that's, that's also really critical. You know, one of the other things that I talked about this week before I, I, I go um, on into everything that's happening this next week is I kind of want to talk about the end of year here and where we're at with markets. And I want to just kind of map it out for you because we're at such a key level if you talk about the S&P. Now, uh, we've discussed about how important this level of resistance is. If you look at the weekly chart, you could argue we are breaking out of this trend line. And you can see here's, a, here's, a, here's another weekly look um, of the S&P where we're at. Now, 
Think about it, and, and I've, I've talked a lot about this on the, the daily shows, but for those of you that just watched the week ahead video, uh, I'll map it out for you. You know, this year, all the macro analysts, you know, macro has become cool. Ever since interest rates started moving again over the last several years, last couple of years, excuse me, macro all of a sudden is, it's everybody's game. Everybody understands macro. It's like the macro tourists are out in full force. And then you got people that are macro analysts and they, they sell their research to funds and blah, 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 blah. Well, most macro analysts have been very much in the recession camp all of 2023. As a result, if you're a fund manager or an institution and you're hearing all of your analysts that you pay for telling you how bad 2023 is going to be, chances are you are underperforming the 18, 19% gain that we've seen in the S&P this year. That over the course of the last couple of weeks have created massive FOMOs we're going into the end of the year. Think about that. If you're an asset manager, you're only up 7, 8% for the year, yet the benchmark S&P is up nearly 20%. You're facing redemptions going into 2024 as, as your investors say, well, you can't even beat the S&P. Why am I going to pay you to manage, you know, several hundred million dollars or a couple billion dollars or whatever the case may be. So the entire market is in FOMO mode going into the typically strongest time of the year. Here's the risk. The risk is we're heading into the last month and wouldn't it be interesting, and wouldn't it be something, if the markets end up finding some really key resistance around these levels and reversing and retracing, and all those institutions, all those investment managers that are chasing the markets at the end of the year, trying to make that extra 2 or 3%, end up giving that all back at the end of the year. The market is really efficient at catching everybody off sides. That's one of the best aspects of the market is when the market gets too positioned or too biased in one direction, it tends to go the other direction, catch as many people off guard as possible. So I want to map that out as I think it's going to be an important theme going into the last couple of weeks of the year, specifically this week and next week. Obviously, if we get past December 15th, um, what's going to happen is you're going to have volume tapering off and you know we'll see. But really important Fed meeting, important week this week with non-farm payroll, you know, a lot of central banks meeting at the very end of the year. So um, buckle up your seatbelts. It's going to be a wild ride. And we're going to get into uh, we're going to get into the analysis part of this uh, this this um, week ahead video. I do want to reiterate that on the week ahead videos, uh, I put my best setups and review last week's setups at the end of the video. So if you just kind of want to skip ahead because you already know what's happening this next week, feel free to do so. If you like us doing that, Jump down in the comments down below. Tell me your best setups. You may not even agree with my setups, which is fine, but I'm going to give you my best setups and I'm going to review what I talked about last week. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about, um, let's start with Monday. Monday, we have Swiss CPI. Now, I want, to, I want to talk a little bit about the Swiss. I haven't talked about the Swissy a lot, actually. I, I've kind of had this, um, I think I might have actually mentioned it last week, but I'm going to bring up this chart, which is fine. Uh, what you'll notice is that the, the Swiss has been really, really pressured uh, to the upside. It was a lot of end of month flows. Uh, uh, one of my colleagues came in. He, he, he was like, hey, based on what I'm seeing, I'm going to see we should have uh, Swiss, the Swiss franc outperform. And he was dead on right going into the end of the month. It actually, you know, showed us some weakness. But I want to show you not only the dollar Swiss were, you know, at the 78% retracement, we closed a little weaker, you know, a little weak um, at the end of the week. But take a look at like the Euro Swiss. Okay, just I'm going to I'm going to pull up this chart really quick, the Euro Swiss approaching some really critical support. Now, the reason why I mention all this is because we have Swiss CPI coming out on Monday. If that CPI data comes in a little stronger than expected, look at how vulnerable the Euro Swiss looks. Just think about that as you kick off the week, especially if you're if you're dealing with Swiss francs um, at all. All right. Also, speaking of which, um, on Monday, uh, I'll just keep it here on the Euro Swiss because we have Christine Lagarde, president of the ECB. She's talking about monetary policy in Paris. So you know the Euro 
is actually uh, underperforming. You can see how we had a big rejection. Uh, I'm gonna show you the Euro. Let's just uh, focus on this a little bit. Big 618 retracement. Look at the weekly candle. That is an outside week, a bearish outside week. Bearish engulfing, bearish outside week. That means the candle is in the, in the body is within the parameters of the current candle previous week. So it's a bearish outside week, which is not a bullish sign. That's why I said bearish. But it's not just the euro that's under pressure. It's the euro, and you look at a lot of euro crosses. A lot, you know, whether it's the euro Aussies breaking down, which we'll talk about um, at, on our recap from last week. We'll talk about the euro Aussie. But you know, you saw the euro Swiss. Here's the euro dollar. Big, big rejection from the 618 retracement. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it real simple for you. While the euro is trading below 110, the risk is, in my opinion, lower. So. We may have found some support near term, and uh, let's uh, let's delete this because I'm doing some work with you, and that's what we do here on the week ahead video. Again, if you like, you know what I'm doing here. Uh, make sure you uh, give us a thumbs up. That'd be great. Okay, uh, I'm gonna delete some of these. Let me get rid of that really quick because we don't need it. But what I want to show you really fast is we are nearing and this is what this is where i think the the rubber meets the road is you're going to have this 38% retracement that comes in just below the 200 dma it comes in let's just say roughly 108 make it real simple we start getting below 108 in a meaningful way like a daily close solid close below 108 like talking 10770s 10760s anything like that you're going to have a lot of people that just got long the euro Check out the commitment of traders, all the speculators getting long. You're going to get all them getting out. So if you're a Euro bull and you're one of those institutional guys or gals that are actually watching this video, you should probably be thinking, I don't want to see it below 108 because if we do get below 108, you're going to have speculators that are going to take the other side of that trade like the people watching this video right now. So 108 key level. 200 DMA, really important support when you're talking about the euro. All right, let's continue on. Um, Monday night, uh, Monday night for us, Tuesday morning, if you're in Asia, you're going to have the Tokyo CPI where the market is expecting 2.4% on CPI. Now, we will cover the US dollar Japanese yen from last week because as you all know, I wanted to be short and was short the, the dollar yen while below 150. I wrote it out on the short side the first part of the week. I think I closed out my position on Wednesday as we were down here at 130, 147 and change. But look at how weak we closed. Now, I also showed you the 10-year um, bond market, which I didn't show you yields, but you can just imagine yields is the opposite of the, what I showed you in the 10-year. If we're going to see that continued inverted head and shoulder pattern in the 10-year, that means yields are dropping. That means the dollar yen is probably going to continue to break down. Break down, excuse me. So what I should do here for you really quick, since you already know that was a big rejection, is let's talk about where that critical level of support is because you can see the 38% retracement also coincides, as you can see here, with that horizontal support level right here at 144.55. So if, or excuse me, that's a 50% retracement. I'm sorry, I should need to take it up right there. There we go, 146.31. Sorry, my eyes were going in another spot because if we break the 38% retracement, the next stop would be about 100 pips lower, maybe 80 pips lower than that. Why should you be thinking that? Because if you're long dollar yen, and let's say you own it expecting us to go to 160 or 155, you're probably looking at that 38% retracement, some of that horizontal support saying, I don't want to be long anymore if it drops below 146.30. So if you're trading the dollar yen, that's kind of your bull bear line. That means bullish above it, get bearish below it. 136.31, got it? Good, all right, let's continue on. Um, so we got Tokyo CPI on Monday. We also have some uh, Chinese uh, private PMI, the Caxon PMI data that's coming out. But also, one of the big, big events of the week, you're going to have the RBA decision. Now, at the end of the week last week, we discussed how big this 200 DMA break was. And we were looking at copper to break the 200 DMA. I'll have to come back to this in a bit. 
But notice how the Aussie closed at or slightly above the 618 retracement. Notice how dips to the 200 DMA are being supported. What does that mean for you? Well, it's pretty simple. Again, bull bear line. While above the 200 DMA, the risk is that we continue to move higher. You can see it right over there, right? You can see it right, right there. If we get back below the 200 DMA, anybody who's bullish is probably going to start, you know, putting their stops closer to that level. All right. Now, here's the risk. We saw that um, Michelle Bullock, she's been pretty hawkish in her tone, in her speeches recently. Uh, but we saw CPI came in, what, 0.3% lower than expected year over year, well above 2%, but I think it was 4.9 if my memory serves me correctly. Anyway, you, you guys can jump in the comments and correct me because I know you will anyway. Um, you can jump down there and just tell me what it was. But what I, the reason why I'm mentioning this to you is because if the RBA's hawkish tone changes, then Aussie bulls are going to have a problem because we're probably going to get back below that 200 DMA. That's why it's going to be so vitally important next week. All right, Tuesday. Did I did I tell you guys this is the uh, this is the week of jobs? I think I said it right off the, right right as we kicked off. But it's not just the non-farm payroll. We get ADP. We get the jolts data. The jolts data is going to be coming in on Tuesday. So let's talk about the dollar index and where we're at. So what a critical hold in the dollar index. Um, not on that chart. <laughs> it's on this chart that we talked about. All right, here we go. What a critical hold at the 618 this week. Um, you know, I, I picked up a lot of uh, I picked up a lot of dollar longs uh, earlier in the week, um, playing into that end of month because I figured everybody was going to be, you know, talking. To, we talked about last week about how massive U.S. dollar selling. I wanted to take the other side of that trade because it was so widely telegraphed, and we hit the 618. There you go. But here's the thing. We have jolts and non-farm payroll, which is going to be an, an ADP, which is going to be critical, critical to what happens in the bond market and what happens to the dollar. Because if the if the jolts data and the ADP data and the non-farm payrolls data continues to surprise the upside, there is now a risk that we break back above this 200 DMA. Do you see how important this 200 DMA is? I mean, it's very glaringly obvious right here. So what that means is a break above Friday's highs. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it for the jolts data. We're, we might need a combination of jolts, ADP, maybe even the non-farm. But if you're short dollars and you see the dollar index break Friday's highs, the risk is that we're going back to the 50 DMA right here. Okay, so I want to make sure I illustrate that to you guys well enough so you can see how big this 200 DMA is going to be. It's also that previous channel, um, you know, pivot, if you will. And you can see how important it is. Look, here, 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 here. Do I have to keep saying it? Here. Yeah, I mean, look, look, it's important, 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 important. If we get above it, is it going to be important? My answer to your question would be, yeah, pretty much. And if we get above it, then you're going to start to see the dollar really recover. And you're going to see all those traders that just got short dollars. You're going to see all of them, you know, liquidating. So dollar index, 200 DMA, pretty important. All right. Uh, we also, um, on top of jolts, we have the ISM services data, which will also be out. Okay. So the ISM services data, which, you know, you should be following along on your calendars on Forex, Forex analytics is going to be very important for the dollar index. And for, because, you know, services data, we, we, we saw the manufacturing data, uh, from this last week, right? So you go look at the ISM and, you know, the prices paid were high, uh, where, wherever my ISM data is, I have to go find it. Um, I believe it was on Wednesday. Uh, maybe incorrect. Anyway, you can find it back here. But anyway, the prices paid data was stronger, right? So 
you know, and you got PCE prices index over here, but but I'm talking about ISM, and we're going to have the ISM services data being a services economy. It's going to be in, in very very important to be watching uh, on Tuesday as well. Now, also on Tuesday, which would be Wednesday morning in in Australia, we will have the our, uh, we're going to have Australian GDP. It's kind of follow up. It might give us a, a, a secondary kicker to that RBA meeting the the day before on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday is going to be really important if you're trading the sterling. Yeah, Michael Brown, if you're watching this, I called it the sterling, the pound, the cable. That's right. Uh, we have the... <laughs> we... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we have the UK stability report. Bailey's going to be speaking. And take a look at how important this 618 retracement is. Whoops. Let me delete that. Let me just use something else. So that 618 retracement is that 127 uh, and change level. We get above that. Next thing you know, we're going to be trading about uh, up towards 129. Do you think this is possible? I think it's possible. I know a lot of you are, are sterling bulls, but... If you look at you know currencies like the euro sterling, look at how well the sterling's performing. Why couldn't the euro sterling you know test these lows? Why couldn't we break those lows? Especially if the stability report comes in and it seems really hawkish. Bailey talks really in a hawkish fashion. So keep your eye on Wednesday if you're trading sterling in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, also on Wednesday. A little bit later that morning, we're going to have ADP data. Uh, ADP is expected to create, uh, I mean, we're supposed to be, our expectations is to create about 120,000 private sector jobs. Uh, so, um, you know, expect volatility, you know, going back to the dollar index, that's going to be really important. And, you know, I'm going to stop here for a second, and I want to talk a little bit about volatility. Um, what, what we've seen is the VIX is threatening to see lows that we have not seen since prior to the COVID pandemic outbreak. So I, I have to say that this is a huge support zone, but a breakdown in VIX is just going to support asset prices like stocks. That suppressed volatility is going to kill the dollar. You know, probably, you know, help gold continue its breakout, which I will be talking about in a little bit. But you know how to take advantage of all this? You take advantage of all this by being part of the Forex Analytics community. You either try Forex Analytics for $1 for 10 days. Make sure you download the mobile app. There's not very many other companies that do FX market analysis that give you a, a mobile app where you get notifications. You get notifications when we get new analysis. You can jump into our community, jump in one of the most active communities in the market. And if you want to be involved in our community, then make sure you check out the trader funding program because if volatility starts to increase and you're like, look, I don't want to, I don't really want to invest my own money. I want to trade somebody else's. Well, check out the trader funding program. You have to take an assessment. The assessment is paid, but if you pass your assessment, which is basically you have to make 10%, but not lose more than 6% on a trailing basis. If you think you can make 10%, and not lose more than 6% in a trailing basis, well, and with unlimited time, and being involved in the Forex analytics community, then you might want to check out the trader funding program. You can try to access counts that are $25,000 all the way up to a million dollars. If you don't have that type of capital to trade, or you just don't want to risk your own money, check out the trader funding program. If you want to know how I personally pass an assessment, just go down below, watch the video down in the links below and check out trader funding program. Uh, you can find it in the link below. All right, let's get back to the markets and let's get back to uh, Wednesday. So again, we have ADP. Uh, now we also, one of the key events of the week is going to be Canada. I'm joking. I said that in a funny way, because I was totally joking. If you're Canadian, you're probably like, what? What did he say? I said Canada. Anyway, we have the dollar Canadian trading at the 200 DMA. We wrote this obviously down last week. That's why I highlighted it. And look, we're there. Whoops, let me go back the other way. Look, we're there at the 200 DMA. So the dollar Canadian looks pretty bearish at this point. Um, but it's going to be whether the Bank of Canada is hawkish or not. 
Jobs data, the labor market continues to be, like, like the US, the lab, labor market in Canada continues to be really, really robust. The issue that Canada and, oh, and Australia and a lot of other economy, UK economy is going to be facing over the next you know, 12 months is when all these mortgages get refinanced at much higher levels. That's really going to put a strain on the Canadian economy. But as of right now, the labor market's really strong and we have to be respectful of that. That's why for the Bank of Canada rate decision, if the BOC remains hawkish, you know, there is a chance that we could re we could revisit the 134 level. You could, you know, we revisit here around the 618 retracement. The flip side is if we start getting back above the 200 DMA, we could really start to ramp up again, especially on a dovish Bank of Canada. Now, I would expect that the BOC is fairly hawkish based on the labor data, but that doesn't, I'm not an economist. I'm just making an assumption here. Um, and if they are dovish, then we are going to start to see a little bit of a move lower. Did you guys hear the, the update, the, the little rattling sound? Well, that means that in Forex Analytics, uh, we just updated some analysis that you can read because you can read um, new analysis that have been uh, posted for different charts throughout the course of the weekend. Um, and you can do it right here and you can see all the updates right here. Okay, let's continue on. So um, on Thursday, we have unemployment claims in the US, gonna be important. I, you know, I didn't even mention unemployment claims just because it's a weekly uh, uh, data point. But obviously, that's going to that's going to, you know, influence the dollar. It's going to influence yields. And the weekly unemployment claims are and let, let's go ahead and do some work on the yields here uh, on the 10 year. The weekly unemployment claims, as most of you know, is the most real time, um, you know, jobs data that we can get. And it's continued to be very, very good. You know, when you have weekly unemployment claims, you can see how every Thursday, right? Um, like this week, you know, the weekly unemployment claims, they came in at 218,000. Now, a lot of analysts and economists are looking at, looking at continuing claims. Those are going to be also uh, pretty, pretty important. But just keep in mind, well, we're below like 250,000. It, it just shows you how robust the U.S. economy continues to be on, you know, with, with jobs. So uh, obviously Thursday's data is going to be important there, especially ahead of the, uh, the, the non-farm payroll. Uh, I want to stop for a moment and talk a little bit about the U.S. dollar Mexican peso because we were talking last week about how important the 17 level was for so many different reasons. Uh, a, because before we got there, I assumed, over, over if you've been watching the week ahead video for the last couple of weeks, I was assuming that we're developing some sort of triangle pattern, triangle consolidation. And I told you over the last couple of weeks, I'm buying the dollar Mexican peso because I'm expecting a, an eventual pivot off of these lows. Well, we are getting that. You can see we're getting this basing pattern right around 17. What does that mean for you? Well, if inflation continues to drop uh, globally and we see these deflationary pressures continue to come in, um, Mexico is not going to be immune to that either. So we got Mexican CPI on Thursday. If that data comes in a little weaker than expected, I think there's a risk that we trade back up to the 200 DMA as you see this basing pattern, um, you know, develop. Obviously, a break below 17 would be a very bearish event. If we saw a break below 17, that means that probably volatility is dropping globally. You're probably seeing stocks rally globally. And that would put some uh, upside pressure on the Mexican peso. That means the dollar Mexican peso would be moving lower in that situation. Um, now on Friday we have the U, uh, we have Swedish um, we have Swedish oh geez we got GDP, industrial production, household consumption. We got a lot of uh, new orders, a uh, lot, lot of stuff. Construction outputs coming out. So. Been looking at this inverted head and shoulder pattern possibly developing in the US dollar Swedish krona. Um, you know, that's mostly ba based off what the Rix Bank, uh, you know, stance has been. But I want to tell you this much if we start breaking back below 1030 in a meaningful manner, um, below this level, that means that Swedish krona is really starting to take off again. And that means probably the euro is rallying above 110 
right? So the US dollar, Swedish krona, keep an eye on it. I still think we have the, the risk of developing an inverted head and shoulder pattern with the uh, you know neckline being around 1055. Um, now Friday, we're obviously gonna have jobs data. Uh, you know, whether you're focusing on the US dollar, Japanese yen, or your, the Euro dollar, um, or, you know, some other dollar, uh, we're going to have the jobs report out on Friday. My opinion is, and let, let me just stop here and talk a little bit about jobs. If the dollar gets hurt following the jobs data, the best trade to be looking at at this point is the US dollar Japanese yen. Why? Because yields are breaking down and the closest, um, um, you know, uh, 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 correlation that you're going to get to the like yields is going to be with the US dollar Japanese yen. So if we have a weak jobs report on Friday, focus your attention on the US dollar Japanese yen. However, if we have a strong jobs report and you guys have seen the jobs data, the market has been trying to trying to guess, myself included, that the labor labor market was going to start to cool but how about if November's data uh, continues to be really strong? If it is, then the euro dollar is probably going to be the focal point on the downside. Remember, what's key here? 108. What's key? 200 DMA. What's key? 38% retracement. We get below those levels. We have a we have a, a dollar that's probably rallying substantially. And we have a euro that's probably going to be seeing the 50 DMA once again. We also have University of Michigan uh, consumer sentiment and uh, inflation data coming out on Friday. So obviously a very jam-packed week um, that we're going to be you know, going through this next week. It's going to be bonkers and it's going to give us a lot of volatility, a lot of opportunities. Now, uh, what I should do with you really quick. Let's take a look at the, uh, I'm going to go revisit the S&P really fast and, and, and take a look at some of these other markets because, you know, the S&P is approaching really critical resistance. If we get a foothold above like the 4620 level, you know, you have to imagine that we're going to be in breakout territory, whether it will hold or not, and whether it responds well or negatively to the jobs data is to be seen. You know, I'm in the camp that stocks can rally on a good jobs report. It could rally on a bad jobs report. Because it, the reason why I say that is because the market could take a weak jobs report and say, look, it's weak. Fed Chairman Powell's right. The rest of the Fed governors are right. They're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be dovish. They're not they're not gonna be hiking anymore. And we might actually get rate cuts at you know first quarter of this next year on weak data by stocks. Also, if the data is bad, or excuse me, good, the market might say, look, it's good data. The, the Fed might have to keep rates higher for longer, but we, we might not get a recession by stocks. See, I think the stock market could really rally on either data points. Now, I also believe that if the data comes in weak, that the stock market might actually take notice because if the if the data starts to get a little weaker, like we start to see, maybe instead of creating you know, uh, you know, two hundred thousand jobs or whatever the market is looking for, you know, actually I think the market's going to be. Let me let me let me pull up the data really quick on the averages that the market's looking for as far as data goes. Um, give me one second. I had it right in front of me, so let me go ahead and pull it up really fast. Um, we are expected to create 150,000 jobs. So, and and the other question is, is unemployment going to remain below 4%? That, that's the other thing, because the market's expecting 3.9%. So if unemployment gets to that 4% handle, or let's say we create 20,000 jobs, or maybe we lose jobs, the market could come under pressure because the market would start saying, look, we're going to get a recession. And if we're going to get a recession, then stocks typically go down a recession. So we don't know when the market's going to get that in its head, but it isn't right now. The market is responding well, good or bad data. So just keep that in mind as we go into the jobs report on Friday. Okay. 
Um, but here's the S&P. Look at the Dow. Have you guys seen the Dow? The Dow's trading like literally at all uh, new highs of the year. Okay. You can see the Dow is just ripping up, you know, to new highs of the year. And we're about ready to challenge all-time highs. We're, we're almost there. And if you look at the, the NASDAQ 100, we're not very far off either of all-time highs. We've talked about the NASDAQ 100 trying to trying to break break higher. So, um, you know, we're kind of do or die levels for bulls. I do believe that stocks are not going to be able to sustain these gains. But just because I believe that doesn't mean it's going to happen. And it doesn't mean I'm going to be just start shorting stocks right now just because I have this feeling. But I do think that the risks are that... You know, you got so many people playing the FOMO trade right now that they might find themselves wrong footed the next couple of weeks. But you can see all the critical resistance levels that are being tested, whether you're talking about the NASDAQ, um, at the, the, the S&P, uh, the Dow. I haven't talked about the Russell 2000, but, um, you know, um, Jim Welsh, he brought that up this week in his his uh, his interview that we, we we had together. You can see we're in the middle of the range. I would say it's probably around the 50% retracement if I had to guess. Um, you know, we talked about this range, how important it was a few weeks ago, and it held. So yeah, I mean, we're near the, we, we're at the, actually around the 618 retracement. So obviously critical resistance, not in just the, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, but also the Russell 2000 right at the 618 retracement. Um, also, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys have looked, but the DAX continues to look really strong. We're almost at all-time highs in the DAX, in the German DAX. Yes, that's the German economy where their PMIs are sub-50, but the German DAX still likes it. Now, we are a little overbought here, probably up to some extremes as far as relative strengths go, goes, which should be noted, but still, market is extremely strong still. All right, let's cover... Some of the, uh, the, the, the developments from last week. Okay, so the setups that we had last week, let's start with the first one. US dollar, Japanese yen, short while it's below 150. Th those are my notes. And yes, I was short the dollar yen last week um, early on. And I said I had a short in the, the, the dollar yen. And I played it to the uh, middle of last week and I closed it out. If you're listening to the face show, you knew that I, when I closed it out. It was a nice trade. Uh, hopefully, you guys got to capitalize on that. Uh, the Euro Aussie. So the Euro Aussie at the end of the week really, really broke um, its support. It really, really started started to break down. And we talked about it being a big pivot. And if we broke down, we'd break below the 200 DMA. Obviously, it, it fell through that. I played it on the long side, you know, as we were bouncing off that trend line earlier in the week. But as you can see, it's obviously broken down. Now, the Aussie, we were talking about the Aussie staying above the 200 DMA. As long as the copper, as long as copper started to show some life and get above the 200 DMA, well, copper broke out, Aussie broke out. So, hopefully, you guys and gals were trading some of that, uh, some of the, some of those setups from last week. Now, this week, the three setups. First setup is the 10 year. So, I think the 10 year is going to stop at the the 38 percent retracement and or excuse me, this is the 50% retracement. I said 38% retracement later or earlier. If you already corrected me down in the comments, good for you. I'm glad you saw it. Um, but it is the 50% retracement. I misspoke. But you can see big resistance zone. Let me draw it out for you. Big resistance zone right here between the 200 DMA, horizontal resistance, and the 38% or uh, the 50% retracement. So I think that's where we're going. So what am I telling you right now? I think yields are going to continue to drop a little bit till we get the 200 DMA. All right. Uh, that means if you're trading the ZNs, uh, the 10 year uh, bonds, you know, if you use like think or swim and you're trading futures, I think the bond market's going to continue to rally here. All right. Uh, Euro dollar is my next setup. Setup number two, the Euro. It's an outside week, as I explained to you. Um, outside weekly candle. That means... You focus on the the euro dollar. You sell to you sell rallies. So if if you you know if you're going to be dealing in directly in the euro, like here's an intraday chart, probably want to find some place like close to, I don't know if we can if we if we're lucky enough to make it to 109.50, which I don't think we are. But if we can make it up to 109.50, that's probably going to be a great opportunity to be on the short side. 
or maybe even shout uh, before that, maybe the 38% retracement, somewhere between 109 and 10950. I think if you continue to focus the euro on the short side, I think that's going to continue to play and pay. So that's setup number two. Setup number three, what do you think it is? Well, you notice how I didn't mention it and I didn't show you a chart of it. So I'm going to have to show you a chart of it right now. It's make or break time for the gold market. As you can see, gold is up at the triple top. A break above this resistance, whatever these highs were, which was 2080, if I'm not mistaken, let me figure out what that number was. 2081, we're at 2072. So you have to be looking at the, 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 um, the gold market as a possible breakout, but it's a pivot area. I'm not trading gold, and I'm gonna, because I'm gonna be trading the dollar, but obviously if gold is going higher, that usually would correlate with the dollar weakening. Yields are coming down. Flip side to that is if gold rejects up here and we're developing some sort of wedge, if we're developing some sort of wedge and when you start to see the dollar come down or excuse me, uh, gold come down, that usually is reflective of the dollar rallying or the Euro dollar coming down or the Aussie dollar coming down. And when, with the bearish outside week that you see in the Euro, you can't, ignore the fact that the dollar could rally. And if the dollar rallies, it's going to stop gold in its tracks at the, uh, at the, at the uh, 2080 level. All right. So with that being said, guys, gals, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Give the team a thumbs up down below. Comment if you agree with these setups. If you have some other things that you're looking at, jump in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, at least... 99.9% .9 of you I'd love to hear from. Uh, and for the rest of you, if you're watching this video and you, you're just enjoying your weekend, thank you so much for spending your, your most valuable asset, which is your time with me. I appreciate you. And I will see you Monday morning on The Face Show. Talk to you then. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.